hello hello uh there's been um a thread on my facebook group about items that you can't purchase or some people can't purchase um and a couple of them are actually probably really easy to make and i say that um i have paper bags for example i've made bags on um my channel before using music paper and that is somewhere if i can find the link i'll pop it on but i made gift bags using uh, music paper i've got some of this um i only have a few sheets left so i'm only going to make one because <laughs> i don't want to waste this paper i do love it i've got some uh masking paper coming today it was really really cheap and it's on a roll and i'm hoping it's this kind of paper so we'll see when it arrives but i, I have a, f a couple of sheets of this so i thought we'd make a paper bag and you can make them kind of any theme you want you can decorate them anyhow you want i've got let me just i've got this vintage um cash box with my my stamps in um so i'm gonna uh they're not all of my stamps but there are a lot of the wooden mounted ones so i'm just gonna pull out these ones that i've recently mounted they are i believe i've put the link for these on my website if i haven't i will do um i got them from uh blade rubber in london and they're all kind of postage themed but uh you have to cut them out and mount them yourself if you want them mounted so i'm going to use these and i'm going to be quite random about it and i'm going to use that to decorate this now what i've done is i turned the page over and i literally made a fold then I folded the other side over just so I had a bit of an overlap. And then I folded the bottom up about a centimetre and a half or three quarters of an inch, I'd say this is. Um, so I've got my kind of paper bag shape, but I'm going to stamp it all before I cut it out. Now, I'm going to use archival potting soil. You could use black because I know a lot of the paper bags have black stamps on. And I am literally going to just start stamping and I'm not worried about having overlaps. I'm not worried about having having them even. I'm just going to stamp. And I've tried this before on washi and it went horribly wrong. So we'll see how my random stamping goes this time. <laughs> Hopefully better than the last time. I'm not worried if they don't stamp completely, not at all. I'm just going, going randomly. I don't want to overfill it. I'm happy to have a bit hanging off the edges. Get one in there, one in there. Go at the top there. I'm going to start repeating some now. Uh, Now this bottom bit is going to show, so I'm going to just add a few more stamps here. And what else can we do? Uh, got a few gaps. I'm going to fill those. Okay, I'm happy with that, I think. I might just go in there. Maybe another bit down there. There we go. I think that's okay. Right, so um, I've stamped my 
piece of paper. I'm just going to give that a few seconds to dry. Now, I'm going to cut these bits out, this bit and this bit, just because we don't need them. I am going to use the flap on the outside because that's what we get kind of most of the time with the paper bags. The flap is on the outside. So this has not got to be as perfectly lined up if you're closing it with the flap on the inside. Let's just see how that's going to go. I think I'm going to have a bit of that way. And then that will come up on the outside. Right, I need to trim a little bit more off here because that flap's not quite closing. So I'm just going to take a little bit more off here. Not too much, just a little sliver. And if you've got, you could use any kind of stamps you have. You could use florals, you could use... Um, script stamps anything you have it really doesn't matter you could just use it to the theme of your project now when I close that up I've got quite a lot of blank space here so I'm going to add another couple of stamps a bit there and let's go for a bit there and I'm just going to very slightly mitre those edges going in too much but that's going to be the outside of my bag which I think is going to be fine now it's kind of a decision what I'm going to do along the top whether I'm going to make this um uh right what I've got I have my I'm not sure how well these are going to work on this thin paper this is a I'm going to try it on a spare piece. Yep, yeah, that's okay. So the pink and shears go quite well. You can get these really cheap too, actually. What I'm going to do is this is probably where it's going to go horribly wrong. I'm going to just slightly round this front part of the paper bag. And try and line up as best I can. I struggle with pink and shears, they're so heavy, aren't they? Okay, and then I'm going to take a very slight piece off the back, or what will be the back when the bag is closed. I'm trying to line my edges up so it's. Didn't do a very good job of that bit. So that's going on there, that's going there. This will close up. I mean, let's let's, let's pink and shear that bit too because you often get that on bags, don't you? Again, trying to line that up. Best I can. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. So that is going to be our bag and then the back is ever so slightly higher than the front. So let's glue this down. I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac. So what I am going to do is I am going to, just to make sure I don't glue anything I shouldn't, I'm going to glue up this. Nope, 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 I'm not. I'm going to rub that glue off. I want it this way. Okay. So I'm going to glue up the up this inside here. And I'm going to glue this edge here. I'm just going to come in a little bit, not too far. Close that up. And then I'm going to glue the bottom flap. And you might not be able, I mean, you can use 
any type of patterned paper. You can use wrapping paper. Um, at Christmas, you could use Christmas paper to make your paper bags. So it doesn't matter if you can't buy them. I mean, you could you could have pink and cheered up there as well if you wanted to. It doesn't matter if you can't buy them. A paper bag is so, so easy to make. There we go. We now have a paper bag. And if you wanted to, you could then go ahead and cut the bottom off, fold it up and pop it into a journal just like you would a purchased paper bag. All you need is a piece of paper. It doesn't, this is a thin paper, a bit like the bag with the paper, you know, the brown paper bags, but you don't have to use um, this type of paper. You, could, Like I said, you can use wrapping paper, you can use pattern paper, any paper you like um, to make your bag. Um, stamping them, you could you could even collage them. That would be perfectly fine, wouldn't it? There you go, a paper bag without buying one. That's the first thing. <laughs> uh, the second thing is glassine bags. Now, I'm not sure this is going to work particularly well because sometimes this is quite difficult to glue. I have some really cheap tracing paper on order, which um, I couldn't wait to do this video. I just wanted to do it today and have a go. So I'm going to make a little glassine bag, hopefully with this tracing paper. This is more like a vellum and I'm saying it's more like a vellum because it's got a smooth surface on it. It goes through your printer. It's not the really thin tracing paper with a rough edge that I kind of associate with when I was a child. Anything that's got this smooth edge, I think is more like a vellum, although it is called tracing paper. They're very, very similar. And this one is, I the, the ones I buy are either 90 or 100 GSM. So the new tracing paper I've got coming, which we'll probably do something else with, um, is I think it's 63 GSM. Now I'm just gonna roughly, yeah, that would work. What I've done is I've just got a piece of cardstock, I folded it over, and this is roughly the size I want my bag. Okay, so all you've got to do is you can make it any size you want, but just start with a piece of, of, of card. So what I intend to do is, I'm going to grab my ruler. I'm just putting my card template about a centimetre and a half into my tracing paper because I want a flap and it's about six inches or 15 centimetres is the top of my card so I'm going to um, cut this with my paper trimmer get it out I'm going to add a, a, about a quarter of an inch actually. So it's about six and a quarter inches or 16 centimetres. I've cut that. I haven't done one of these for a while, so bear with me. It might go horribly wrong. Um, and I think maybe that's slightly bigger than I needed. Anyway, all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my tracing paper over my template, my cardstock template. And then this way you can make several and know they're going to be all exactly the same size. So that's okay. I'm now going to open that up and I'm going to fold it that way. Okay templates done. Now I'm going to keep the middle section and I'm just going to cut out the outside too um, that we don't need. These scissors don't like this paper particularly and I'm going to mitre that inside section. Probably done that a little bit too much. It's very very similar to how you make the paper bag and um, If you wanted to what you could do is fold the top over so you've got flap and you can turn this into an envelope too if you wanted to now I can see I'm going to catch there a little bit so I'm just going to take a little bit more off there and this side 
once you've folded this stuff it's quite difficult to work with it because it kind of wants to ping into the, the fold you make there we go that's that I'm going to use my bone folder just to burnish this down because it is there we go right now with this one you can um, use your pink and shears again if you want to now I use Fabri-Tac but sometimes you will find it doesn't stick this type of paper so let's give it a go I'm going to do it in exactly the same way I made my paper bag in actual fact I've probably got a lot more of an overlap here than I need um, should I trim it or not I think I I think I am I think I'm going to trim it so I'm just going to take my pencil and make a little line I'm going to draw a line to cut this time and I'm going to cut on the inside of it so that pencil won't show. It's actually very difficult. I'm going to do it this way around so I can see my line. do it exactly the same way so I'm gonna glue up either side I'm gonna put a very tiny bit across there because I know it's a little bit of an overlap just gonna glue down here I'm gonna fold it now you will see glue you can use double-sided tape that's probably a good option um, but once the glue is dry and you've got something in your little envelope, you're not really going to see the glue. Especially with Fabri-Tac because it's clear. Okay, so but there you have your little glassine style bag that I've glued closed. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, that's got rid of that. Um, this is the problem with this particular paper um, and that's why I'm waiting for this tracing paper because some of this won't stick particularly well. Um, this, is, this is much better than the freezer paper. I find the freezer paper quite difficult to make the bags out of. Um, but in the UK, it's got a slightly shiny side, both sides. Um, at least the freezer paper that I've purchased is has. So there we go. There's a little, um, a little glassine bag. And like I said, if you wanted to, you could cut the front off so you could make a flap too. Now, you could use this process using any type of paper you like, any pattern, any, um, you know, you can use your tracing paper, you could use uh, packaging paper. Uh, the packaging paper you get from Amazon is probably perfect for making these kind of bags. Um, but that was just a quick and easy little tutorial just to help some of you guys out, especially if you were in the thread in, in the group and saying you were struggling to find some of these things in your country. So I hope that helps. Um, Artie Maze has a fantastic tutorial on making the large manila file folders, but I'm happy to do a plain one. If, if you like, just let me know and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.